In this lesson, we are going to discuss the sum function. The sum function adds all the numbers in a range of cells. So instead of doing this, you can do this. Okay, let's get started. Before we jump in, let's break down a function. A function is a predefined formula that performs calculations using specific values in a particular order. The basic syntax for a function is an equal sign, the function name, sum, for example, and one or more arguments in parentheses. The function in this example has only one argument and adds the values of the cell range A1 through A20. If you watched the previous video in this series, you remember the party planning problem. Let's take a look at this and figure the total cost for all the items. Be sure to download the practice workbook. You will find the link in the description below. It is the same one I will use to demonstrate. And I am on the simple formulas worksheet. So here for my planning for a party, I've calculated what each individual item is going to cost, but now I want an overall total. So I'm going to use the sum function. I'm going to type in the equal sign, sum. Notice my menu that pops up and I'm going to select sum. If I double click on that, my open parentheses automatically appears and I know I want to add D18 through D21 and I can type that in. Now the colon means through D21 and if I hit enter, it will automatically close the parentheses. So what I did there was I manually entered the cell references. What I want you to get in the habit of doing is actually selecting the cell reference or the cell range. So I'm going to go back and do this one again and do it slightly different. Equal, sum, and I can manually open the parentheses or I could double click on the sum function. But this time instead of typing in D18 through D21, I'm going to click, hold, and drag over the range. Now why it is good to get in the habit of doing this is because you can eliminate data entry error. It's hard to look over here and see where am I at? D18, uh, it's D21. If you're working on a really large spreadsheet, it's kind of hard to figure out where you're at sometimes. Now I'm going to hit enter to close the parentheses and to end this formula. And there we go. Let's try another one. This time let's go to the budget worksheet. I have just a simple yearly budget set up here and I want to calculate what my expenditures are for January. So again, let's go ahead and enter this formula manually. Equal sum. Again, I can open the parentheses or double click on my sum function. And now I'm going to click and drag over the range that I want to total. Notice that it automatically inputs B4 through B17. Hit enter to close the formula and there's our result. Let's do this again for February. But let's do something just slightly different. This time we're going to use auto sum. So the sum function is so common in Excel that there is an auto sum command, which is the same as the sum function. But let's try it out. So for my February expenditures, I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked in C18, where I want my totals to go. And if you look on the home tab, you see auto sum, and auto sum is also under the formulas tab. It's the same exact thing. So I'm going to click on auto sum. If I click on it once, you notice that it automatically inserts the sum function with the range. It detected a range of cells that contain numbers. That's what it used for our range. So C4 through C17, and I can either click on auto sum one more time or simply hit enter. And there we go. That was a little easier to use. Here is something to be careful of though when using the auto sum. Let's calculate the expenditures for March. And notice, doesn't look like I have any medical expenditures for March. So I'm going to use my auto sum again. Notice what happens though. It only goes D15 through D17 because it saw this blank cell and thought that's where it was supposed to stop. So you need to be aware of this or you're not going to have a correct formula. So let me escape out of that. 
Now, there are three things you can do to avoid this. One is you can select the range that you want to total. So if I go ahead and select the range D4 through D17, then click on my auto sum, it will automatically take that entire range and input the formula directly beneath your selection. Just going to undo. Now another thing that you can do to avoid this is where you have blanks, you can put in a zero for you didn't have any expenditures that month. So then when you do auto sum, it will automatically detect the entire range because now it's not blank, it contains a number. The third thing you could do is simply readjust the selected range. So when I click on auto sum and I see that it starts at D15, there's actually two little dots in the corner. I get a two-sided arrow. A two-sided arrow in Microsoft means resizing. So I can just resize the selection. Now go ahead and practice inputting April through December. And then we can also do yearly totals for each expenditure. So for example, mortgage, again, if I use my auto sum, it automatically detects the range of numbers, or you can manually insert it. Click, hold, and drag over the range. So again, go ahead and practice for the remaining ones. And there's also another sum worksheet down here that you can practice on. And that is your sum function. By understanding simple formulas and the sum function, you are well on your way to becoming an excellent Excel user. If you have any questions regarding this video, please post them in the comments below and I will respond to you. Now that you have an understanding of the sum function, there's some other functions that you're going to pick up on really quickly. Average, max, min, and count. But that's in the next video, so make sure you click on the next video and I'll see you there.